Hi, and welcome back to U.S. History with Mr. Snyder. That's me, and today we're finally going to finish up Chapter uh, 10 and our unit on the development of children, and today we're going to talk about probably the most important section, cognitive development. Our learning targets for today, just two of them, but they've got some sub-targets underneath them, quite a few. Explain the four stages of Piaget's cognitive development theory. And we're going to analyze Kohlberg's theory of moral development. First, we got to we got to talk about what these people are doing when they actually are piecing together the world. And there are two processes called assimilation and accommodation. Piaget thought that we use these to organize new information. So assimilation is the process by which new information is placed into categories that already exist and accommodation is accommodating for new information it's ch a change in your uh, mental hierarchy brought about by new information take a look at this video and this will explain it a little more schemas are categories or the basic structures we use to organize information they're almost like folders. In this case, the categories are about vehicles, cars, and trucks. Information is sorted into these schemas or concepts. Each new piece of information has to have somewhere to go, a folder to fit into. When new information can fit into one of the schemas that has already been created, like cars or trucks, it is placed there. This is called assimilation. Sometimes we come across new information that does not fit into any of the already existing schemas. An Escalade isn't a car or a truck. That means a new folder or schema has to be created so this information has a place. Like SUVs. This process is called accommodation. The Escalade now has a folder to fit into, a schema it belongs to. Now new information can continue to be sorted into schemas using assimilation. And the process continues. His first stage of cognitive development is the sensory motor stage. And this is just basically learning how to be alive and coordinate your sensation with perception in your motor activity. It's characterized by the also, you have to get, before you leave the stage, the concept of object permanence, which is the idea that objects don't go away when you can't see them. Here, however, infants will learn an important concept, object permanence. Everything has a life of its own, even if it is out of sight. At Maya's age, babies know to look for the object but they might not have everything else straight. Ten-month-old Simon is about to make a classic mistake, known as the A, not B error. Although he watched us place the toy plane under the white cloth, he'll look for it where he last found it, not where he watched us hide it. Next is the pre-operational stage, and this is from the age of two to seven and it's usually characterized by one-dimensional thinking and egocentrism. I'll have examples of egocentrism here in a second, but this little girl in the picture cannot think whether or not that's the same amount of juice in the glass or not. She says it's taller, so she's only thinking about one aspect of that, and that's called conservation or um, representing internally something about an object and that's what we're going to be studying uh, later on coming up. Can you look at these two glasses? Do you think that they have the same amount of juice? Mm -hmm. You think they have the same? Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to pour this juice into this glass. Now do you think that this glass has more juice? This glass has more juice? Or do you think that they have the same amount? That one has more. This one has more, and why do you think that this one has more? Because uh, it's taller. In the concrete operational stage, which is 7 to 12, children begin to show signs of adult thinking. They're logical when they think about the things in front of them and things that they have dealt with, concrete experiences. They can focus on two dimensions of problems at a time. 
they're also less egocentric than the children in the other stages. And what I mean by egocentric is thinking that everything has to do with them. So why does the sun shine? To keep me warm. Why is the grass green? Because that's my favorite color. And what are TV sets for? To watch my favorite cartoons. Everything revolves around them. And then there's also the um, kinds of thinking when they're artificialistic and animistic. It's when they bring things, they give human qualities to inanimate objects. Why do stars twinkle? Because they're happy. And then in animistic, they believe that some sort of human created everything around them. So the sky, the mountains, the wind, humans created that. Can you tell me what you see when you look at that from where you're sitting? What are some of the things that you see? Um, and a cat. A cat. And a tree and a bone. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. Can you tell me what you see when you look at it from that stool? Um, an owl. An owl? And him. What, what's, what is that? A goat. Yeah. Okay, is there anything else you see? Yeah, right there. Right there, what is that? Uh, a tree. A tree. And that's another little tree. Another little tree? Yeah, right. Okay. And can you tell me what I see when I look at this from where I'm sitting right here? Uh, an owl. Okay. And a goat. Mm hmm. And a little tree. And that. And that. The last theory from age, t or the last stage from age 12 and on is the formal operational stage. And people in this stage can think abstractly. They can deal with hypothetical situations and they can solve problems and use imagination. So this is really when you begin to think like an adult is the formal operational stage. First one says, if you hit a glass with a feather, the glass will break. Okay. And the second one, Don hit a glass with a feather. What happened to the glass? It broke. And why did it break? Because the rule says if you hit a glass with a feather, it'll break. So if you hit a glass with a feather, it broke. Here they all are in a nice little chart for you. 0 to 2, 2 to 7, 7 to 12, 12 and up. I would recommend knowing the ages and the characteristics of each stage. Criticism of Piaget's theories are, some people say, how, question how accurate they are. Because he used his own three children for a lot of his samples, plus all of his other sample was rich kids from a higher socioeconomic status, and they were all white. So as we learned in our first unit, it's hard to generalize that sample to others. Environmental factors, um, recent research has said that the environment that a person grows up in has a lot to do with their development. So again, these theories are 60 or 70 years old and um, they um, people don't really use them. They use them for a basis, but they use them basically for a starting point and that's what we're going to be doing. And also recent research says that four and five year olds have a very deep understanding of their own thought process and they're less egocentric than Piaget had suggested. And so there are no strict Piagetian uh, psychologists today. His theories are still respected and still um, used. Now we get to Kohlberg and his moral development theory. He worked with Piaget, but he decided to take his theory a step further. And he says there's six stages in three levels that we go through. And the first one is the pre-conventional morality in stage one and two. In stage one, rules are fixed and absolute. You are supposed to avoid breaking them because if you break them, you get punished. And the whole goal is to avoid punishment. Stage two is judging actions and making decisions based on whether or not they serve individual needs. Stage three, sometimes known as the good boy, good girl stage, is when you are supposed to conform to society and play nice and live up to social expectations and roles. And this is um, early teenage years, I would say, from uh, 9 to 12, 
and then getting into the early teenage years. Stage four is maintaining law and order by following the rules. But you should also consider society as a whole when making choices. You don't see yourself as just an individual anymore. You see yourself as part of a society and you are to respect the authority in that society. And lastly, we get to the post-conventional morality, and this is stage five and six. In stage five, we do think about others, and we do think that they may have differing beliefs and attitudes than ourselves, and the rules of law in our society are important, but we think that a majority of the people should agree on those rules. And stage six, Kohlberg says, is the universal ethical principles when we get here we kind of listen to our gut this is our own morals we're following even if it conflicts with other people it's what we have it's what we know we have to do is right in situations and here they are all together and that is it for our lesson today that's the end of chapter 10 be ready for the quiz and i will see you tomorrow